I've been trying to do a catch up with all of the different papers that have been coming out in relation to IgG4 antibodies observed in those who have been mRNA, mRNA vaccinated or those who received mRNA gene therapy for those who do not like to call it a vaccine. And this paper is a little unusual. It has a, just a tiny amount on IgG4 um, component itself. This paper actually made a splash for different information and it had to do with survival post hospitalization. So let's talk about this. Let's break this all down. My name is Dr. Dr. Mikola Rashek of Marigenomics. Let's get going. Um, so first of all, they had about 112 patients and who were hospitalized with say severe COVID. And what happened here is uh, of those 20 some, I think it was 23 were vaccinated and 89 were non-vaccinated. And as I mentioned, they all had severe COVID and this was like serious situation for these people. And what, what the authors did is they simply measured the survival of these individuals. And the reason why they did this is because really there's often a proclamation that vaccines should help you against severe COVID. And while it might help against getting hospitalized, we really don't know what happens to such individuals once they become hospitalized. There's conflicting data on that. And I'll talk about this in a moment. So when they assess these individuals, of those who are vaccinated, 70% of them eventually die versus non-vaccinated individuals. It was um, 20 some percent or maybe 30% I think of them died. So a huge difference between those who had vaccines versus not. And one of the reasons why maybe there would be such a large discrepancy between vaccinated versus non-vaccinated for survival is maybe because you could just say the few individuals who were vaccinated who happened to end up in the hospital, maybe they were worse for comorbidities than vaccinated. So they also compared these individuals with regards to comorbidity index. So they took same number of both vaccinated and non-vaccinated individuals that were similar in terms of what kind of comorbidities they were exhibiting. And basically, again, vaccinated were worse off than non-vaccinated. There's some other interesting tidbits of information the study also showed. One, for example, was that those of who, who were vaccinated and the vaccinated the issue with the vaccinated is that the people who were involved, it was kind of all over the board. Say, um, I think like a quarter of them were triple vaccinated, 30% of them were two vaccinated with two shots, and then one third of them were in complete vaccination, and then the rest was was uh, either unknown status or not even mRNA vaccines. And all of these vaccinations I've been discussing up to that point was mRNA vaccinations. So majority of these people were vaccinated with mRNA vaccines. And the interesting part is that those who had incomplete vaccinations, again, survived better in a hospital than those who were fully vaccinated and boosted. So again, another really interesting component. Then for the non-vaccinated, they had more of these individuals. What was also interesting is that for the non-vaccinated individuals, they could split them. Oh, they got They could split them into two categories. Those who were non-vaccinated before vaccines were available on the market and after. And what's interesting, ooh, big wind suddenly picked up. And what's really interesting is that those who were hospitalized before mass vaccination began survived better 
than those who were va who were hospitalized after mass vaccination began. And the authors attributed this possibly because on the account that what might have happened here is that once mass vaccination began, Delta variant became prominent and it's one of the most pathogenic and deadliest variants we had to contend with. And that might explain the reason why this was observed, okay? But <laughs> another possibility that no one ever really talks about is perhaps the possibility of shedding. But again, that's never investigated, so that's completely unknown. But that's something that could also explain why we observed this. Uh, just a conjecture. But something that I thought was really interesting as well. So that's the different survival status. Well, now let's talk about the IgG4 antibodies. They measure total IgG4 antibodies between the vaccinated and non-vaccinated. And then they claim that in third week post hospitalization, the IgG4 antibodies were increasing in the vaccinated group. And there, as I mentioned, and the authors mentioned this as well, there's observed trend that the IgG4 antibodies are increasing in the vaccinated. Well, the only problem here is that this is really not good comparison. It's not very informative for us, what they're telling us or what they showed us. And for a variety of reasons, you can't really compare this. Number one is the fact that those who are vaccinated, some of them were only vaccinated with one shot and we don't know what happens with IgG4 antibodies after just one mRNA shot. That uh, hasn't been studied yet, to my knowledge. On top of that, we don't know if any of them were infected prior to vaccination. And again, that would, have, uh, would affect the IgG4 levels. It would protect you against that. So another information that we, we don't know. So not a good comparison. The only, and then last thing is that we already know from past studies that, that uh, when you get hospitalized, if there, you have increased likelihood of having IgG4 antibodies as well, and that can correlate with indeed worse outcomes for the such individuals. And that's without vaccination status. So you can't really compare this. So it's not super informative. The only good news here is, in, and the last thing is that they also, the acid they use showed super variable results. So don't know if that's very informative. The only thing that's good, in fact, to me, is that it showed that the total number of IgG4 antibodies wasn't really dramatically increasing. And that's a good news because that's not what we want to see. So that's why, and that's pretty much the only reason why I really wanted to discuss this paper truly in the context of the IgG4 series. Now, in terms of what happened to these people and these dramatic negative outcomes for the vaccinated individuals, people were mentioning that... Uh, or the authors were mentioning that some publications showed that vaccination definitely helped against, against um, severe outcomes once people were hospitalized. But there's also publications that showed the other way. So the jury is not out yet on that. So that I thought was, uh, you know, like interesting that they mentioned that. And another thing is... Uh, and, and basically, that, that's, that's one thing we still don't know, right? And right now, this is the, the main narrative that we keep hearing, is that now we know vaccines do not protect you against infection at all. And data clearly shows that. But the, So the narrative has shifted to the concept that, well, at least it protects you against severe outcomes once you get hospitalized. But that's where the conflicting data is out there. And these authors clearly demonstrate that. And this... This paper has brought a big discussion among some of the scientists that I have a privilege to, say, correspond with and, and assess some of this information. And they, one of the, the scientists brought up a very interesting point is that they, they said this reminds them that perhaps the vaccination 
it's not the infection that is the problem here, but the vaccination could be the problem itself. Because in the past, in 2012 study, when people were dealing with the very first SARS, SARS-1, this author, this space scientist brought up this paper that showed that mice that were vaccinated against SARS-1 and then subsequently got infected by the virus, SARS-1 virus, these mice develop bad pulmonary or basically lung immune-related pathology. Basically, their lungs were heavily infiltrated by these type of immune cells called eosinophils. And I hope I'm pronouncing it that correctly. Maybe not, whatever. So I, uh, I often get this wrong. But basically, there was... Oh my God, huge avalanche right behind me. I don't know if I can get it. Not good because my friends were there. Oh my God. Well, obviously I'm a little scared. Oh no, they're coming down. I don't know if you can see this. I just had an avalanche behind me. Oof, crazy. Well, we're in avalanche territory when we go, but... Yeah, my friends, I can see them. They're coming down, but they're literally just skiing down right below the avalanche. Wow. Ah, backcountry skiing. Crazy, crazy. Anyway, where were we? So yeah, so basically this has been observed before during the very first SARS-CoV-1. And the authors of that infamous paper, I guess, even warned, about the possibility of making vaccines against coronaviruses such as SARS-1 for humans because of the possibility of this pathology that can happen afterwards uh, when the individual gets infected with the actual virus after the vaccination based on these animal studies. So there could be a possibility that getting infected after vaccines under some circumstances could lead to a similar type of immune-related lung pathology such as has been described in the past with animal studies. So I thought I'd share that for you. Clearly we need to know more and what the role of this specific type of cells infiltrating lung tissues, eosinophils, is all about. So, um, right, okay, that's, I'm gonna wrap it up right here. We'll see whether I captured the avalanche on the video or not. The most important thing is, is that my friends are okay. So, uh, yeah. Wow. They, <laughs> I bet you they were scared skiing down. So, uh, yeah. Thank goodness uh, we stayed away to film this video. Hey, subscribe to this channel, please. If you haven't already, give us a like. Leave a, leave a comment behind. And what else? Make what? sure to hit that little bell below. <laughs> Maybe you'll see more stuff like this. Oh, yeah, exactly. And also check out my Patreon account to where I make other content that does not make it to the YouTube channel. And most important, go out there and enjoy yourself in Mother Nature. Maybe not such extreme Mother Nature, but hey, um, it's beautiful in all its glory. The good stuff and the crazy stuff. Bye for now, everyone.